All right, so what we did in the last video was just within a raster program like PhotoP or Photoshop, uh, brought in, imported a typeface, hand form, wrote our words, placed them where we wanted to on top of our image, and then stretched them, rasterized them, I, uh, and customized them. So by stretching, playing with the spacing, the kerning, like the space between the A and the, the P, the space around the I, um, and then adding serifs to make it a little folksier, to go with my chicken image, and adding an offset and adding a drop shadow and then saving it as a PNG at a high resolution, right? How do you know it's a high resolution? You, you set that an image size and I should be able to zoom in on it in preview and have to go pretty darn close before I can see any pixels, right? So that means it will print cleanly and well. It also makes the kind of effects we add like the drop shadow look a lot better. But I just want you to notice that you are required to do black type but it's, it is required to be customized, right? So it should not look just like the screen grab from Defont. Customize its spacing, customize its um, orientations, customize its, its specifics to fit your project. But you might also see once you have it just on its own, and I ask you to turn it in this way into PhotoBucket, that without the image behind it, without anything else, you know, just as a type solution, you might make little tweaks. Typography gets very picky. So in terms of the kerning, of the spacing between, I, I don't like how the A is running, especially with the stroke, right into the end. So I'm going to fix that. I'm going to increase the spacing there a little bit. And I don't think I like how much of the apostrophes offset is touching the N. So I'm going to space that out a little bit. I do actually think the O needs to touch on both sides because the O takes up so much space anyway. So often isolating it helps you make it better. And because it's a raster program and because digital has this great advantage over having to do type by hand, I can simply control J within photo P and duplicate that layer, right? It's already rasterized. And so then I can fix those spacing issues. So if I want a little bit more space between the A and the N, I'm simply going to lasso. Remember, the black type are the only actual pixels. Everything else is an effect, the drop shadow and the stroke that's linked to the pixels. That can be turned on and off. So I can just lasso it and then just use my arrow keys to nudge that kerning until there's some separation. And then I squint and it's still very readable. Want it a little closer. There we go. And then same thing for, for this. First, I'm going to cut around all the black type to the left of the T and then just nudge it to the left until I just open up the tiniest of spaces. and then everything to the left of the apostrophe. Just to open up a little bit of space, kind of squint and see, yes, that's still readable. I might even decide, because remember these are just pixels now and I'm customizing. I might even, even decide that I want to, whoops. Remember in Photopea you have to use control, not command. Okay, so command T or control T to get a free transform box and I might decide I want to tilt it, right? Or I want to shrink it, or I want to give it a slight tilt. And holding down shift and option, nudge it over, maybe something like that. And then because I made a copy, I can compare that with what I had before. And I can see, yeah, I like that. That's more readable. So that's better. So now I have an improved 
black um, black type. So don't you're not truly uh, finished with it until you like it just on its own. You think it holds up. And that can be tricky. That means you have the right typeface, you've modified it in the right way. All of that is good. So I'm going to export that now as a PNG. So I can put that up to photo bucket. My best black type. Now in terms of how to stylize that type further to go with your spot illustration and what kind of background to put behind it, I have to slow down a little bit here and think beyond just the words on top of an image. And I have to think of how all of them work together, right? Like I did when I did the blocking sketch. So I'm going to go to the assignment. I'm going to go to instructional examples for assignment eight. And I'm going to bring all of my resources together. Where's my folder here? Into here. So this was my old finalized type solution from the last video, but I've updated it and improved it because I was able to see it on its own. I'll keep both so you can see them. And so this is my new one. And it even reads better small. So little, little choices. This is why I'm saying it's really picky, this typography stuff. Little choices can make a big difference. This is just a lot more satisfying to me than this. I am happier with this than with this. And they're both at high resolution. They're both clean. Uh, the stroke and the drop shadow can be turned on and off for both of them, right? Because it's just black type. Just like your black logo is just cut out of black shapes. And you can think of that as a logo type, in fact. Or what's sometimes called a word mark logo. All right, so before we go on to figuring out how to color that type, right? Because you see in these past examples, we first do our black type, then we color it. But notice there's a big change from this to this. So once we figured out our black type, we then want to be able to envision how that type works on the full poster. And it no longer needs to look good just on its own, right? So for this case, it had to get spaced differently. And then because I knew, because I was building it all together with the spot illustration and with a background, I knew I had to have like hints of the colors from everything. And it had to, to have a gradation and so now we need to think of the full poster. And in order to do that well, we need to look for, to me, you know, for my experience in art, before we do something we haven't done before, we need to look for uh, insp inspiring examples so we can start paying attention to what we think is done well. And I want to acknowledge this deadline, come on, just by... <laughs> giving to this folder so I can upload. So this is the first thing I ask you to upload. It's just your finished black type. The next thing will be your finished color type. And then the last thing will be your finished poster, which will include your type, your spot illustration, and a background with a border. And we have until we have a week to do that. We have until next Monday. Let's see. So you know you're finished with your type design when it just feels satisfying on its own. But now we have to integrate that with a spot illustration that we like into a full poster, right? So. I can get rid of this one. That's the one I want. I'm happy with this spot illustration. Now, how do we put them together? I, I know basically how I want to place it, right? But not exactly yet. And so I'm going to go to Google. 
and I'm going to create what's called a style sheet. This is something designers use all the time to help with their design and coloring solutions. So I searched a Google image search for letterpress posters, uh, indie concert posters, right? I'm going to create a new folder just like we did when we were doing compositing, but we're not going to use these actual pixels. And it's going to call it inspiration. Style sheet inspiration. If I was an art director in a design firm and we were doing posters, we would have a big kind of uh, cork board in the office or a magnet board or something, and we would put up the things that inspire us, you know, very Pinterest style. And that would be our style sheet, right? But for now, I'm just going to drag these Google images into this reference. And the reason I like Google images this way, and I always open it in a new tab, is it shows me similar things, right? And you'll notice because I looked for letterpress, everything's kind of limited color. Everything looks kind of folksy and hand done. Uh, John Prine, great musician who just passed away of the coronavirus last week. Very sad, very sad. Good poster though. Sometimes really, really simple compositions can be inspiring to you. Just innovative uses of text. Here we have two or three very different typefaces used in this poster to control eye movement in an interesting way. This uses halftone printing, which we're going to learn about, to help uh, make just two focal points clear, the type and this photo, and then everything else just supports it. This is kind of folksy. It's not a full composition, but I kind of like those color differences and the, the smear and the change of value, which I might make use of. This is just really elegant. It doesn't matter if it's high resolution or not to be inspiring to you. So you might steal like texture or color ideas from it. Another one that uses some half toning. Keeps it really elegant. <laughs> I like how this one's just so straightforward. Spot illustration, type. And notice how they play with, you know, lots of different typefaces. Modern, italicized, handmade, a sloppy, you know, to, to kind of move the eye through. Uh, all capitals, lowercase, you know, and so on and so on. So once you start paying attention to this stuff, it'll be interesting to, to see what you're interested in. A book cover design is another kind of place you see poster design like this. And then this one is maybe the most similar to what mine is, right? with the type just right over an illustration. That doesn't mean I'm gonna match that exactly. Because you're doing your own thing, but it's good to see how other people have solved these kind of compositional issues in the past. And letterpress posters are known particularly for type, right? If you do like silkscreen, those tend to be more image heavy. but they're also often balancing a spot illustration with text. This is a nice one. These are all good bands. Here we go. Another nice one. So how do you deal with the style sheet? Well, this is how I like to do it. I take that folder. get rid of any that didn't save correctly, right? And this is on a Mac. But I simply kind of fit all my favorite ones 
into one screen here. 